Good morning. Uh, I am so glad to be here this morning. Very glad to be here this morning. Very glad to be here this morning. Uh, I think when Dr. Day, well, when God gave Dr. Day the message for me to teach this class, I was fine with that. No problem at all with that. I just did not know I was coming in behind such a wonderful man of God and great speaker. I mean, Dr. Green has done a wonderful job with those first two lessons. <laughs> he has done a wonderful job with those first two lessons. And so uh, he just doesn't know I've been sort of pitching for him to do this thing on Wednesdays quite often. <laughs> I was trying to get him to do it this Wednesday. But Dr. Dr. Day said, I already got the schedule made out of it. I already got the schedule made out. But, but hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. I just uh, thank him so much for what he has meant to the Oak Gardens family since, he, since he's been here. Him and his lovely wife, uh, they mean so much. And so uh, with that said, we're going to be studying the book of Jonah today. I know all of y'all know about the book of Jonah, right? What was good about the book of Jonah? It was the, uh, was it the uh, octopus? Oh, the whale. Okay, okay. It was a whale. It was a whale. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Father God, thanking you for all that you do. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning, to be here this morning, to study your word, Father God. Allow uh, the message this morning. That allows someone to take something from this message, Father God, that they will implement it in their lives. And Father God, if it, they need change, it'll change them. But maybe it's somebody that they don't know that's out there in the world just to see uh, what they're doing and how they're walking their life according to your will, Father God, that they may ask, what is it that you have uh, that I can get and be saved also? And so we thank you for all that you do. Be with Dr. Day as he's away. These blessings we ask. Amen. Also, we got another announcement. Uh, the Cooking Well for Health Blood Pressure. Uh, I think they're going to have dates on July the 11th through August the 22nd. Jackie Metlin will be out front for you to sign up for that. Right, Jackie? If you'd still like to join, room in that class. So I'll see her afterwards. Uh, but I think y'all had a big group of people this morning, so. They may want to split some of you guys up <laughs> uh, on those on this Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But uh, like I said, it's so hard to follow such a great speaker as Dr. Green. Uh, you know, he spoke about Habakkuk uh, the first week, uh, teaching us no matter what something looks like, what something feels like, if God is in it, no obstacle can block the great nevertheless God. And, and I just love that nevertheless, God. No matter what happens in our life, nevertheless, we're going to serve God. And then last week, uh, he talked about, uh, of the first two weeks, he, first two weeks, he talked about Amos, who pronounced judgment for the adultery uh, and oppression, oppression of the poor, and how God opposes the self-righteous because God seeks people who genuinely express their love for him through heartfelt worship and love and all of our faith to get through his lesson, and, and he exalts us to be humble and when all we do. We want to stay humble in all that we do. And so today, today in looking at the uh, prophet Jonah, let's start with reading verses 1 uh, through 3 of Jonah. And the ver first verses 1 through 3 reads like this. But Jonah got up and went into the opposite direction to get away from the, from the Lord. Then, the, the, the verse 1, the Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarsh. He bought a ticket and went aboard, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarsh. And out of that, as I was studying this, 
Jonah forsakes his mission. His mission from God is to go to the people and warn them to change their ways. And so God sent him to Assyria. And Assyria was a great but evil empire. But God just didn't send him to Assyria. He sent him to a specific place in Assyria. He sent him to the city of Nineveh, which was like the capital of Assyria with over 120,000 people that lived in darkness, including the animals. They all lived in darkness. The Assyrian people were heartless people. They intentionally disobeyed God's commands and laws, abusing people in the most cruelty of ways. And when Jonah heard God say, go to Nineveh and call the people to repent, he ran the other way. How many of us have done that? You know what I mean? Uh, you can run, but you can't hide from God. I mean, how many of us have tried to run when God asked us to do something? I know I have. I have. And it never worked out the way I wanted it to work out when I ran. No matter how far you run or where you hide, God will weed you out when he has a mission for you. No matter where you go, where you try to hide, if God has something for you, it's for you, and he's going to make sure that you get it. We may do just like uh, Jonah did here, you know, because he asked us to do something. We fear we don't want to do it. We think he's asking too much. Sometimes we run in fear of stubbornness, claiming God is asking too much from us. I mean, is there times in your life that you, God is telling you something but you don't want to hear it because you don't think you're the right person to do the job. You know, when I first started having to speak in Bible class, I was in fear because I hadn't done that before in front of people. So inside, I did not want to do it. I really did not. But what I had to do is I had to pray to God on this command that was sent to me. And once I prayed to God and gave it to God, it relaxed me. But you know what else helped me? Studying the Bible. I, I think any one of us can speak because God has given us that. To speak his word, he's given all of this, us that. And so anytime that we're out and, and somebody wants to hear something about the word of God, we should be able to say something positive something constructive about the word of God, of God that will help people and maybe change their lives and change the outcome or their look on such a situation. And so uh, sometimes uh, even in stubbornness, we don't want to do it. Sometimes we're just hard-headed. I know I've been hard-headed in the past, you know, and I just did not want to do uh, some things. But did God give too much of himself when he died on the cross for our sins? Was that too much for God? Huh? Was God, was God, was God in fear? Huh? Was he in fear? When Jesus said, I, I'm going to give myself up for your sins, did he not want to do that? Huh? Why did he do it? Why did he do it? He loved us. He loved us. And he wanted us to see the other side once the, this side of earth was done. And so he gave his life with no question asked. It's much easier to do what God asked in the first place. You know, or it's much easier to do what your parents asked in the first place. It's much easier to just do what's right in the first place. You know? How often has it been that a parent coming up asks you to do something? And you did not do it, and it did not turn out good. <laughs> I remember as a kid, my mom told me, my little brother and sister, when we go to work, don't y'all go outside. <laughs> well, they didn't have cameras back then. <laughs> what, <laughs> you know, what, wasn't no ring cameras. Wasn't at the, at the house that they could pull up and see us outside like they had told us not to be. But this particular one day, when we went, left to go outside, we locked the house, forgot the key, and left the key inside the house. 
So we could not get back in the house. And next thing we heard, an hour, two hours late, we heard a loud voice. Sounded like God. It was mama. <laughs> Anthony, Monica, and Douglas. And all of our friends followed us home because they know what was going to happen. And so if we just do right in the first place, do what God asked us to do in the first place, I think life would be much easier. Uh, we get ourselves in a lot of worldly troubles because we want to do what we want to do, and we want to do what we want to do when we do it. And a lot of times, God says, okay, I'll let you go ahead and do it because I know you're going to come back to me. Because what you do, you will find out it's not working out for your best interest. And when I follow, when I, even in life, when I begin to follow the word of God, uh, my life changed. My marriage changed. My relationship with my kids changed. My relationship with friends changed. Because it was much easier to live like God wanted me to live than to live like I wanted to live or the world wanted me to live. And so, uh, so with that said, we can't hide uh, from God. And let's read uh, next. Let's go and read verses 1 through 8. And it said, But the Lord turned a hurled, the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea causing a violent storm that threatened, that threatened to break up the ship apart. Fearing the lives for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their God for help and threw cargo overboard to lighten the ship. Now, who did they shout hurls to? Their God, not the God. They shouted hurls to their God. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hole. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. How often is it we've been in a situation just like I talked about a while ago. We, we did what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. And it did not work out where, well. And then you start to pray to your God. God, help me get out of this situation. I remember as a kid, me and my brothers and sisters, we got in trouble, and mom said, y'all going to get it. We would go in the backyard and start rain dancing and praying to God. <laughs> God, help us. Please, don't let mama whoop us. Let daddy whoop us. Because our daddy was very light and lenient. Mama, there was no end. There was no end to what she would do. But we would pray. We've done something wrong. We know we've done something wrong. But we didn't think about this until we got in trouble to talk to our God about it. And so that's what he's doing here. So now what they're praying is not working to their God. And so he's asking them, Jonah, get up and go pray to your God. Then the crew cast a lot to see which one of them had offended the, God, the gods and caused the, the terrible storm. When they, didn't did, when they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us, they command, demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? nationality? All of these questions came about now because they're desperate for answers. Their, their ship is being wrecked. Their lives are about to be destroyed. And then they go and they say, it's you. It's you. Who are you? Where are you from? Help us. Talk to your God and get us out of this situation. Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since, and since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to stop this storm? 
throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and I will be, and it will become be, become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. All my fault. This is what Jonah is saying. I know this this terrible storm is all my fault. Sometimes we bring other people into our mess. How many of y'all brought other people into your mess after the fact? After the fact. You know, I can only just talk about my life because I got I got a, a life as a kid, as a young adult, and as a duck. And I remember days when I would do something wrong and I would be in trouble with my mom or dad. You're talking about bringing other people. I would think about what my answer would be, what I was going to say happened. But before I went to my mom and dad now, I went to my siblings, my little brother and sister. This is what I'm going to tell mom and dad. And y'all just bag me up and just say, okay. Now, they had nothing to do with me getting into this mess but I brought them in this mess. You know, a lot of times that's what happens to us. We must be obedient to the word of God and follow his command because our sins and disobedience can hurt others. Jonah ran, but he just didn't run and hide by himself. He ran and, and got on this ship with people who had nothing to do with him disobeying God. Although these people were disobeying God, they were doing what they wanted to do, and, but Jonah ran on this ship trying to hide from God. And just like I said earlier, you can't run and you can't hide from God. What did God do? He started to break up the ship, and, put, and that put other people's life in danger. We have to be very uh, obedient to God's word, because when we don't, it hurts other people. We must compare what we do, how we respond to God's standard of living. If we, if, like I said earlier, if we just followed that, trouble would not be around us. Our lives would be much better if we just follow what God says. This is much easier to do right. We are evil by nature. We are evil by nature. God knows that, and that's why he gives us his word to try to help us with that. And so if we just follow what God wants us to do, uh, life will be much easier to live. And so now let's go ahead and read. Uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they got a whooping too. Because <laughs> in, in our household, if one did wrong, all did wrong, you know? And so because of my wrongs, it just didn't hurt me, it hurt them. And you, like you said, you're always going to suffer consequences, you know? No matter what you do in life, if you do something, you may not see the consequences today, tomorrow, but years later, you'll understand those consequences and, w and what's going on in your life because that's the word of God, you know. We're all going to have to, we're all going to suffer when we do wrong. And there's no way around it. He has to punish you. If he didn't punish us, what would we do? Huh? We, we keep doing what we want to do. We wouldn't stop to look at our wrongs. We wouldn't look, stop to look if we hurt somebody, if we did wrong. I mean, none of those things. That's what wicked people do. Wicked people do that, and that's the people of Assyria. They become wicked. Disobedient to God's word. And they hurt other people. And so let's look at uh, verses 9 through 16. I uh, stopped at 12. Let's go to start at 13, and we're going to read it all the way to 16. Instead, the sailors rode even harder to get the ship to land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they could not make it. Then they cried out, cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die from this man's sin. You know, what we just talked about, you know, being disobedient can hurt others. 
and don't hold us responsible for his death. O oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reason. Then the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him over into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were all were all struck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve. In the beginning, when the storm came and started tearing up the sea, what did they do? They prayed to who? Their God. You know, nothing happened. Nothing changed. And then when Jonah came and said, I ran from my Lord. It's all my fault. And Jonah told them to throw him over the sea. And all this would stop because he knew what God would do. Then it stopped. Then what did they say? Uh, now I will serve you. They changed their whole mindset. God has a way of making us change our mindsets when we do wrong. You can go through so much stuff that you're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired that at some point you change your whole mindset and say, God, I surrender all. I surrender all. I remember when I was, oh, 20, 21, and I said, well, I'm not going to change my life and follow God until I'm 30. <laughs> but I said this. I said, I'm going I'm I'm to I'm live life to the fullest until I'm 30. I'm going to have fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it, and I'm going to just do what I want to do. You know, and then stuff started happening in my life. You know, I got married at 22. So I had a family. So some of the stuff that I was doing, it had to stop. But it was more than that because I was still doing things I shouldn't have been doing. And then suddenly trouble came. I remember me and my friend we're sitting watching the NBA championship. Houston Rockets, Phoenix Suns. And I was just around the corner, right off of Gannon Street. My buddy lived in the apartments, and we lived right off of Camp Wisdom. And me and my wife, we was, well, we were struggling for money, man. I mean, bills was coming in, car notes were coming in. I mean, the car note was down, the car was down, it needed to be fixed. And man, we were talking. And uh, in the middle of the game, O.J. Simpson came on, he was running. And they, and they interrupted the game and, and all of this. And I was telling my buddy about this. He, made, he said, go home and pray to God, man. I said, I'll be a hypocrite if I do that. I said, I don't talk to God now like I should. And so now that I need him, I want to go home and pray to him. I said, hypocritical. I can't do that, man. He said, man, just go into your closet. He said, he gonna, he'll hear you. He'll hear you, man. He said, God is always, his ears is always open and listening what, you know, to his children. He's there for you. And I said, no, no, I can't do that. And that night, I remember, because we had just sent off our taxes. And back at that time, you couldn't get them in two days, you know, three days overnight. You know how they, they, they give them to you the, the same day now, don't you do that? <laughs> and so we, you couldn't do that. You had to send it off, and it's about six weeks before you get your money. And I went home that night, and I went in the bathroom, and I just prayed, God, you know. I know I haven't been disciplined like I should be. I know I've been talking to you. I know I've been serving and doing what you want to do. But there's any way that you can, you know, help us uh, get out of this situation with these bills and get the car fixed and things of that nature. You know, I will serve you. And like I can say that we had sent off our taxes about a week prior. And that next Saturday, in the mailbox, our income tax check was in the mail. Man, I said, there is a God. And he is alive. And that started me on the path that I'm on now. Of serving God as he wants me to serve. Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. But I'm far, far better than I used to be. You know, because I choose to serve him first. You know, that's, that's what God's wrath 
looks like. And the outcome is, woo, the outcome is just, I can't even describe the happiness of the outcome. And we'll talk about this in, in the next segment too. What has God told you to do that you refuse to do? Anybody? Has God told you to do something and you didn't do it? Am I the only one? <laughs> I think we've all been there. That God has told us to do something and we didn't do it. If you want more, more of God's love, you must carry out the responsibilities he gives you. You know. To get that love, you got to have a relationship with God. In any relationship, if it's love and God, you do have to have a relationship with him. You have to talk. You have to do things together. You, you have to recognize, you know. And so if you're not doing those things, uh, then you're not going to get the love from God that you want to have. God loves you, but your love for him won't be as strong because you're not doing what he wants you to do. You cannot say that you truly believe in God if you don't do what he said. And like I said, it's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes because we want to do what we want to do, you know. We sometimes believe more what we see than what we, we read or hear. You know, when I, as a youth director, when I was used to with the, be with the kids, I used to tell them that all the time. Y'all don't believe more than y'all, more than what you see than what you hear. Because our conscience starts to bother us when we don't do what we want to do. And it eats us, and it eats at us, and it eats at us. And it eat, continues to eat at you unless you sit down and have that conversation with God. Sometimes you have to God to just to remove this thought or remove this thing out of your mind, you know, because you can't do it by yourself. And if you do that, you'll be able to serve God much better. And your love for God will be much stronger if you do those things. And so let's go ahead and look at uh, chapter 2. And this is Jonah's prayer, verses 1 through 9. And all of these things happened to Jonah. And they threw him overboard. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the inside of the fish. And this is what he said. I called to you from the land of the dead, and Lord, you heard me. You threw me into the ocean's depth, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waters engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, O oh Lord, you have driven me from my presence. Yet I will look once more toward your holy temple. I sank beneath the waves, and the waters closed me over. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the, of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth, whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord my God, snatched me from the jaws of death. As my life was slipping away, I remembered the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. Those who worship false gods turn their back on all God's mercies. But I will offer sacrifices to you with strong songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Then the Lord ordered the fish to spit out Jonah onto the beach. Why? Huh? When he had no other choice. Huh? When he couldn't get out of the situation when he was, he was in. When he thought he was about to die. Doesn't that sound like some of us? Huh? When... When we, when we do so much wrong, we can't get out the way. We call on God. 
And this is the prayer of thanksgiving that God spared his life because he disobeyed God's command. I know God has spared my life quite often from disobeying his command. One time I, I just didn't think I was going to make it. I said, this is it. I've done wrong for the last time. I don't think God is going to save me from this. But yet, here I stand. I give praise to my Lord and Savior for that. You know, Jonah was overwhelmed with joy because God heard his prayer. How many of you guys are overwhelmed with joy when you think God has heard your prayer? When you're riding in the car and life is just grabbing you and won't let go. I've found myself many times driving down the street and, and tears of joy just start rolling down my face. You know, because I know what God has brought me from. A mighty long way. You know, that's, boy, that's, that's joy that's overwhelming. You can pray anywhere at any time and God can hear you. Don't let nobody tell you you can't pray to God. You can go places where no one else is at. And it, you can go to the supermarket's restroom. And get in a stall and pray. You don't want anybody to see. You know? Right there where you're sitting, you could be praying to God all alone. Nobody knows it but you and God. Life will grab us by the horns, guys. And we need God. Not just today, not tonight, not just tomorrow. Every single moment of our life, we need God. And we need to be talking to our God. Your sin is never too great or your predicament never too difficult for God. No matter what you've done, what you even think, thought about doing, that was a sin. God will still come to your rescue if you call on him. Grace and mercy, only he can give. <laughs> only he can give it. And so that's what Jonah was Jonah right there on his deathbed say Lord I'll do what it is that you're asking me to do because I've brought this destruction on myself I brought this destruction on other people but because your grace and your mercy you get me out of this situation I'll obey you and so let's go to chapter 3 and then it says Verses 1 through 5, Jonah fulfills his mission. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day that Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on, a burlap, or put on burlap to show his, their sorrow. And when the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robe. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on the heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herd and flock, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnest to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps yet, even yet, God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying them. Jonah fulfills his message. God gives us many opportunities to repent and accept him as our Savior due to God's grace and mercy on us. Many opportunities. Every one of us in here have sinned many times and hopefully have asked God for forgiveness of those sins. And because of God's grace and mercy, he grants it. Don't feel like you're disqualified from serving God because of past mistakes. 
God still wants you to carry out of his work. Many men in the Bible had lives that was corrupt. But God used them, didn't he? He used them. So don't feel like whatever you've done is too bad for God to still use you because God can still use you. God's message has to be delivered. And he needs his people to deliver it, and we are his people. And so he can change us. He gives us second chances because of grace and mercy. So when you have that opportunity, take that opportunity. You know? You never know when God has you on a mission. And so always watch. Be watchful. Be mindful of your actions when you're out and about. Because not only is God watching, but people are watching. A lot of us, we call ourselves Christians, and we go out and act just like the people of the world. And so then, but we, then, but we say, come on to church like me. Why would they want to come to church like us when we're acting like them, like people who are not uh, 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 of Christ, you know? So we have to be very mindful. And don't let fear of social society pressure stop you from the assignment God has on you. No Facebook, no TikTok, no Instagram. None of, don't let what people might say about you stop you from t talking about God. You know how God has delivered you. A lot of times we worry about what people are going to say, what people are going to think. You know? They can't judge us. Only God judges us. They can't judge us. A lot of times we worry about that, and it stops us from the mission God has us to do. You know, I see a lot of you guys inviting a lot of family and friends to church. And I see them coming, but I see them coming because I see the people you are. I see the Christian person that you are. I see how you carry yourself. People will follow you if you carry yourself like God wants you to carry yourself. And again, not perfect, but we're different from the people of the world. And we have to be mindful of, of that when we're in this world. God gave compassion on the people. He went back to his wicked thoughts. Mm. You can't have compassion on them. You can't save them. They cannot be saved. You know, you must destroy them. God can do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it and how he wants to do it. And we have, cannot question it at all. Because when it comes to us and people say God can do it to you what he wants to do, how he wants to do it, and when he wants to do it, and then we say, no, he, I want God to have compassion on me. Show mercy on me. We must not forget that we don't deserve to be forgiven by God either. Grace and mercy can only be given by God. Right now, we're sitting here. And I know me for one. I think and know that it's the mercy of God. I should have been dead a long time ago. You know? But God spared my life. You know? And now, look, I'm following what God set out for me to do. Right here this moment, he set out for me to teach this class. And I just followed his word. No matter who you are, what you do, or how God, or how good or bad you've been, God's forgiveness extends to all who repent and believe that God is. And that is is whatever you need him to be. <laughs> whatever you need God to be, he can be that for you. All you do is have to have that relationship where you talk to him and tell him your problem. You know, and when you're done telling him your problems and things work out for you, then you go back and you thank him. Like the prayer that Jonah did. You know, overwhelmingly joy. Thankful. Because if it wasn't for God, where would I be? You know, my grandmother used to love that song. Where would I be? <laughs> if it not had been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? You know? All of the time she sang that song, 
And when I became an adult, I understood what exactly what she meant. You know? Where yeah. would we be without God on our side? And so, I thank you all for allowing me to teach the class this morning. <laughs>